Hi everyone, I'm Victoria, and in this talk we'll be learning about robust training and monitoring. The key goal here is that if a model's action would be bad, then we either know that it would be bad, or we are uncertain about whether it would be bad. What we're trying to avoid is cases where we incorrectly believe that something would be good, even though it would actually be bad. Monitoring and robust training are both important for this. Both monitoring and robust training need to prioritize harmful and high-consequence behavior. So in monitoring, what we want to do is evaluate each input-output action event that actually happens in the deployed system. While we can't evaluate or properly rate everything that could happen, it might actually be feasible to evaluate everything that does happen, because only a finite number of things actually happen. What we're going to need in order to make this work is to have cheap heuristics for monitoring most of the time, because most events are not particularly concerning or important. But then we want to hierarchically deploy more powerful or expensive evaluations on demand. The most of the time, we'll only be using very cheap scans to check the outputs of our models. And equally important is robust training, where we try to cover the space of possible training data. Of course, we cannot cover all the possible training data, so we need to prioritize here. We want to prioritize data that's likely to be informative for model training, and also prioritize cases that are likely to cause dangerous failures. In an ideal world, what we'd be doing here is synthesizing inputs, sort of an active development of possible dangerous cases, rather than just filtering existing data that we already have. So what are the core challenges of monitoring? We have a space of all these possible outputs, which we can divide on two axes. One is whether the consequences of the output or action are obvious, or whether they are obscure. The other is whether the consequences of the action are important or negligible. We want to prioritize our effort on monitoring and evaluating the behavior of the agents. On things whose consequences are obscure, so we can't just immediately tell how bad it is, but also important. We don't need to waste effort on things that just aren't going to matter. So this is trying to get to the point where we're able to prioritize effort and focus on monitoring the most valuable cases. An important caveat to mention here is that all of this assumes that in principle, if we were to provide unbounded effort, or as much effort as we're practically able to achieve, we would be able to identify this harmful behavior. And it's not at all obvious that it's going to be possible, and this is what we depend on amplified oversight to provide which is covered in a different talk. But given that we can do that, we don't want to waste effort on unimportant decisions or obvious consequences. And this draws on research in uncertainty, anomaly detection, making decisions hierarchically in an online setting, and also adaptive compute, where we're trying to deploy the right amount of effort in the right setting, possibly based on intermediate steps. Robust training, on the other hand, has a different flavor of prioritization required, because the space is much, much larger. It's not just the space of all things that happened, but the space of all the things that could happen. So we need to prioritize labeling data or gathering oversight from the amplified oversight approaches. We focus on labeling data that's likely informative, that would likely affect the model training, and that corresponds to dangerous and important failures. So we are imagining this giant space that contains some dangerous inputs or outputs likely to lead to dangerous things. Some inputs that are likely to produce informative events that would be valuable for training and we're trying to prioritize the intersection of those. Ideally, we don't just filter data that has already been produced, but generate targeted inputs. This builds on fields like active learning, which tries to find the most informative data to train on, and active model evaluation. Also, red teaming and adversarial training, which focuses more on finding dangerous cases. And then things like loss-calibrated uncertainty, where we're trying to estimate the uncertainty and especially trying to be good at estimating uncertainty in cases where it's actually going to matter. So that was a quick overview of robust training and monitoring.